<laughs> Keep it cool and collected, pretend this is casual. How's it going guys? I'm Josh and today we have a ridiculously exciting video. I have not been this excited to receive a package in a long time, like since I was a little kid. My friends at Canon recently offered to send me whatever I wanted just to test for a few weeks. So I've got two big boxes full of really incredible out of my league Canon gear that we're gonna play around with going to unbox and then test in the streets of New York City. So let's get this video going. We've got two boxes. We're going to start with a small one and work our way up. I hope I'm doing a good job pretending this is casual, because it's not. This is like gear that I've always dreamed of using. I'm super excited. Let's see what we've got first. Okay. I think this might be the tilt shift. Oh man, so excited. So this is the 24 millimeter f3.5 tilt shift. And the tilt shift might be the wackiest Canon lens that they make. Canon Professional Services, very cool. Oh my god. This is a crazy contraption. Look at this. There's a lot of really crazy tilting and shifting you can do with this lens. And if that sounds dumb, it's because it is. And I am fully not prepared or qualified to talk about the specifications of this lens. However, give me two weeks of testing with this and trying out different shots. And you will be seeing a full blown video on this lens, what I think about it, what I've done with it, and whether or not I like it, or if it's worth the price tag. This is a $1,900 lens, which is very expensive. And I'm curious if it lives up to the hype. So stay tuned for that one and be sure to subscribe for my future videos. I will say one of the most popular uses for this lens is architecture photography because it actually allows you to, if you've ever taken a photo of a building and it looks like it's leaning back, that's called the keystone effect and it's very natural. This can make up for that, which is very cool doing that in camera. Now you can do these things in Photoshop and Lightroom and I've done this before. It's all under the lens correction tools. However, I'm curious if it makes a big difference doing this all in camera and we'll, we'll see. So stay tuned for all of that and on to the bigger box. And I will say that tilt shift lens to me is one of the most abstract lenses of photography because typically a photography lens, the two variables are zoom and depth of field, like how wide the aperture goes. This is a whole new playing field of focusing points, tilting, shifting, lens correction, very, very cool stuff. So I'm super excited to play around with it. Oh, this is very cool packaging, just all in a convenient carrying case. So this is just part of a program where Canon rents out lenses to photographers to try them out. And I'm very stoked to be a part of this. We've got two lenses and one camera body in here. And yes, I am going full frame for the first time ever. I'm trying to stay calm about it. I'm super excited. So let's start off with the full frame camera body. We have got the Canon 5D Mark IV. This is the newest release in the 5D series. And I'll tell you why I was apprehensive to go into full frame. There's a few things. First, weight is huge and I'm using the 70D right now, which is what I'm filming on, what I take all of my pictures with. And I was worried to be a little bit heavy. And let me throw a battery in here just so we know for sure. But it's actually not as bad as I thought. Another thing that I was nervous about is not having the flip out LCD. Being a YouTuber, I really rely on that for all the video I do. Oh, it even has a battery in here. Wow, it's actually, I mean, it feels really good. It's definitely bigger. Actually, it feels good in my hand. I like that. I'm really, really excited to try out this camera. My other concern, of course, was the price. Is it worth the $3,300 price tag? I'm not sure, so I'm really excited to find out. Now, the one thing that's really killed me about my 70D and just crop sensors in general, which has gotten me really excited to try out this camera, is shooting in low light situations. So one of the big appeals in having a larger sensor, which is, means higher quality pictures basically, is better low light shooting. So for astrophotography, that's a huge thing in which my Canon 70D just does not work very well. I've gotten some okay photos of the Milky Way and the Aurora Borealis. However, with this camera, I can pump it up to way higher ISOs, which means greater light sensitivity. It's basically much easier to shoot astrophotography, the Milky Way, all that great stuff with a camera like this, a full frame camera. It's just much better at night. And also just for street photography, I found that this camera, my 70D, Right around 3200 is my point at which I don't like to go with 
any higher of an ISO because it starts to look pretty noisy and terrible. This camera, I'm pretty sure I can pump it up to 12,800 if not higher and it'll still look good which I'm super excited about. Basically, in a low light situation, this camera is gonna rock your world. This camera might fall flat and of course, more focusing points and of course the thousands of other features that come with a professional level camera like this the 70d is more what they call enthusiast level and it really does the trick for me and i absolutely love it but this has 4k video and that's a big deal so i'm excited to try this out hopefully i fall in love with this camera or hopefully i don't for the sake of my wallet we'll see and i imagine a lot of other photographers here are having the same contemplation should i go full frame is it time and I've had the 70D for almost three years now and I've been very happy with it. So I'm glad I didn't totally rush into full frame, but I think in due time, I will definitely go in that direction. And now for one of the next two lenses. This one is, oof, this is, I'm so excited for this lens. I think the potential this has is borderline dangerous. This is a 35 millimeter F 1.4 lens. Now the reason why I picked this lens is because I love my 10 to 24 millimeter wide angle lens on this camera. Now, this is not quite as wide. I don't think it's even considered a wide angle. However, in comparison to a lot of the other lenses I use, it's pretty wide. Now, at shooting at f.4 is a huge, huge deal because a lot of wide angle lenses are not very fast lenses. And for those of you who don't know, fast lenses means they can shoot with very low aperture numbers, which makes them better in low light situations, better with faster shutter speeds, and all of that great stuff. Now, this 35 millimeter is f1.4, which means it is super ridiculously fast. So I'll be able to use it at night. I'll be able to shoot a lot of cool stuff. I'll be able to shoot portraits with this. Normally, I don't like to shoot portraits with the 10 to 24. I also think this is gonna be way sharper than my 10 to 24 lens, which I found you can't even shoot portraits with usually because it just gets a little bit dull. There's also a lot of chromatic aberration on this lens, and for those of you who don't know, that's when you see little like purple or green edges around the borders of everything in the photo. Now typically a higher quality lens, you won't have that issue with. So hopefully this one comes through, and I think that just having that combination between being fairly wide and also a super wide aperture is gonna be just viciously cool. So I'm super excited to see what we can do with this. Um, and I think I might take this out as my main street lens for today. Also in comparison, notice the simplicity of this lens versus the tilt shift. All you have is the autofocus button and of course the focusing ring up here. And now we've got one more little piece of equipment here and that is this one I'm juiced for. This is the 50 millimeter 1.2 lens. So for those of you who know me, or pretty much any photographer ever, you've probably heard them talking about the 50 millimeter 1.8. Now this is really an amazing lens. It's a great second lens for any beginner that wants to get a lens that isn't the stock lens. It's only $100 and it's very fast, so super wide aperture, which lets you get that nice shallow depth of field. Amazing for portraits, amazing for low light situations. And until today, this was actually the fastest lens I have. The second fastest being an f2.8 200 millimeter telephoto, which is very zoomed in. So this is like a very versatile, amazing lens that I highly recommend. Now this is $100. This, this 50 millimeter, same zoom, 1.2 lens is 1300. So what makes this lens $1,200 more expensive and is it worthwhile? So I'm really curious to find that out, but to explain what exactly it is, same zoom, it's a 50 millimeter. However, 1.2 is two aperture stops wider than 1.8, which means you can let that much more light in, get that much more shallow up the field, shooting that much darker of situations, all of that stuff. Now, for those of you who are new to photography, you might be thinking 1.8, 1.2, only a 0.6 difference, that's not huge, what's the big deal? Now, actually, aperture stops get smaller incrementally in number as they get lower and lower. So basically, it's a big deal. And I've heard a lot of snobby photographers say they love their 1.4, they love their 1.250 millimeter. Today, we're gonna find out if it's actually worth the hype. Really, I don't know. Now, let me just make sure that's everything. Charger, extra battery, charger. That's everything. I'm just gonna go out and spend the entire day shooting now in New York, testing all this equipment out. And that's it for the unboxing. One thing I really want to stress here is, yes, I was geeking out over all of this equipment because it's incredible. When you pay top dollar, you're gonna get great equipment and it is undoubtedly better than a lot of the stuff I own right now. However, the question is not if it's good or not, it's if it's worth it because as I kind of played down in this video, some of the price tags on these lenses and camera bodies are exorbitant. A $1,900 tilt shift lens is insane. I don't own anything that nice camera wise. So 
The question is not, are these lenses good? They obviously are. It's the question of how good and is it worth it? So anyway, be sure to subscribe and keep an eye out for these future review videos because I'm going to do a video on each and every one of these three lenses plus one on the MK4 talking about why I like it, why I don't like it, and giving you my honest opinion on if it's worth it. And of course, value is super arbitrary and it really depends on how much you have and how much you want to spend. But anyway, I will try my best to give you a very objective opinion on all of this camera gear. So definitely subscribe for that. Also, if you want to see more of my test shots and for some reason and you couldn't read anything in this video. I have tons more on my Instagram. Link to that over here. Give me a follow because arbitrary self-worth. And also check out my website where I have tons of photo content. I've got a ton of shots. I've also got reviews on all of my camera setup and tutorials. So definitely check all that stuff out. And thank you so much to Canon for sending me all this awesome gear. I'm super excited to be experimenting with it and it's, it's an honor. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you eventually.